Strip away the geopolitics, the money, statistics, everything until you just have the people. The people who are now sharing without guard about the realities, horrors, upside down hilarity, and ultimate humanity inside the tragedy of war. But eternally, we hope that we and they shall not grow old. Welcome to Monday on Monday, where I am long on thoughts, but short on time. The last frames of 1903's The Great Train Robbery sent shockwaves throughout cinemas. That. That caused freakouts and was tremendously terrifying for audiences at the time. Then, 30 years later, King Kong, same thing. Audiences freaked out at the realistic beast on screen. Even some people at the time passed out. So yeah, at their time, their debut, they seemed real, true. But today, those films can seem quaint and hardly worth losing one's mind over, and obviously not real. As these examples show, our technological advances in film have created a chasm over which our imaginations cannot bridge back or self-start backwards compatibility, maybe? It leaves us today on one side of the chasm with a vibrant history on the other. Sure, as a general public, we look over this chasm and appreciate the films, but only cinephiles are really left to geek out about it. As an aside, I think that's okay. The allegory, fairy story, myth under King Kong can point to deep truths that lie on and in the human heart and condition, a longing that is eternal, even if modern technology has left this particular celluloid impression of it as out of date. Okay, Matt, focus, stay on task. Um, so, what if that 1933 King Kong had actually been real. A documentary, news footage, and his death changed not just the landscape of Manhattan, but the whole world. Should we just leave that impact in the hands of cinephiles and historians? Wouldn't we want the general public and those who come after us to fully understand what happened and how it has changed everything since? Well, that's the dilemma, a hundred years later, of making us remember, care, and understand the humanity woven into the very real events of World War I. Left with four by four silent footage, with grainy images skipping along at various clunky speeds, Speeds, we are easily no longer impacted by the horrors and heroes. A chasm has been created, leaving us on one side and the vibrant history of those veterans who changed our world on the other. Cue Peter Jackson and team embarking on a visionary task, a backwards compatibility, if you will, for our imaginations and experiences. They Shall Not Grow Old becomes then an opportunity to watch The Great Train Robbery or King Kong for the first time as the first audience, simultaneously transported back to 1914 to 1918 without forgetting it's 2019. I don't give a crap if you have a Hall of Fame bust or when 20 Super Bowls. At the end of the day, you're all going to die. It's a dark way of looking at it. <laughs> Jackson states explicitly that this film is made by a non-historian for non-historians. He is both a filmmaker and a storyteller. And so he and his incredible teams weave these two together beautifully. With unprecedented access to the Imperial War Museum and BBC audio archives, Jackson gives a modern audience a modern film that honors both the history of film and the humanity of everyday veterans who changed the course of history itself. Jackson does a sort of talk back at the end, going over all the vision challenges and technical achievements. And that part is stunning in and of itself. It's insane. Among other things, they standardized every moving image to 24 frames a second. Remember, things were being cranked out 10, 18, 16. There was no standard. And they created them all at 24 frames a second, creating a base reality for the eye. And then embedded into the silence, they layered in real life artillery explosions, fully effects for everyday background noises, voices of soldiers as they would have sounded by utilizing actors from the soldiers' own hometowns as identified by their battalions with words as identified by forensic lip readers. Here it comes. We're in the pictures. <laughs> There is such care taken here to make all the glaring imperfections of time and technology invisible to the keen, modern eye that 
tied together with a carefully crafted story from authentic interviews with the veterans themselves, we seamlessly slip into a narrative that takes us through a very human experience, specifically focused here on the everyday British citizen who joined the army, what they learned, experienced, coped with, overcame, lost, and ultimately became until their re-entry into a society that, well, I'll let the film unfold that for you. They bridge that chasm between us and a vibrant history. They make it easy, accessible for us to watch, listen, and subsequently Remember, Not to geek out too much here, but early in my life, I was exposed to how poetry from this time about champions, war, athletes, etc., all changed after the nightmare of trench warfare during World War I. Wilfred Owen, Yates, Sassoon, Tolkien, Lewis, an overlooked personal favorite of mine, Rupert Brooke, I, I bring this up because if poetry from then were as ubiquitous today as is film, then remember how film changed after 9-11? How social consciousness changed? Everything changed. And so back to the poetry, there are signposts to hope. Some of those who lived through World War I then in turn changed this newly changed world around them through their written wrestlings with how they'd been changed and in what they had then and now put their hope, a desire for an ultimate restoration here, an ultimate healing, something that doesn't erase the past, but gives the individuals caught in the tragedies of it a dignity beyond even their own and our own imagination's hope, a way to give life to those we have experienced as lost. Like Samwise in Lord of the Rings, Gandalf, I thought you were dead, but then I thought I was dead myself. Is everything sad going to come untrue? What's happened to the world? These desires then are held up by Lewis in The Four Loves. All that is not eternal is eternally out of date. Then, so as not to be bored by numbers, calloused by blood, or overwhelmed by its tragedy, we heed those authors and Jackson here who all ask us for one thing to remember, listen to their stories, be changed by them, and ultimately carrying their dignity in our hearts, change the world around us for good as we now wrestle with that in which we put our hope. What I mean is, go see this, and then indeed, every man dies, but they shall not grow old. And that's my Monday, now back to yours. Thanks so much, everybody. If you want to continue to decode, reclaim, and enjoy pop culture, don't forget to click here for more videos, or, or here, or somewhere around here. And of course, like, share, and subscribe so that you don't miss a Monday.